here. The champ's here. That's right. The people champ is here. All right, here we go. House of the Dragons, season two, episode seven, The Red Sewing. Only one more episode left until season two is over with. And before I get into this episode, I want you to make sure that you like, subscribe, and share this with a friend. Share with a friend. And at the very beginning of this episode, they uh Rhaenyra and Adam meet up at the beach, you know. She caught, you know, Adam uh you know, he he's sea smokes rider now. And uh they meet up at the beach and basically Adam just gets down on knee and says, Me lady, I want to serve thine. I want to serve thee and all that and she's surprised that he's, uh, you know, after he's gaining such a power of, of becoming a dragon rider, he just relinquished himself and bow down so quick. But <sighs> who's surprised? Nobody's surprised to see that. The more important thing is at the council meeting, uh, You know, well, not at the council meeting, but back at King's Landing, where uh, Larry Strong and the other council guy, they watching Eamon banish those, uh, the remaining, the, those guardsmen that started that riot, they, they're getting banished to the wall. And, of course, the councilman, he tells Laris that he heard that Sea Smoke has a rider. And Laris tells him, uh, don't tell Eamon. Which you're always wondering, what is Larry's club foot self up to when he's not tending to his foot fetish or stabbing somebody in the back? You just wonder, what is he up to? Old Larry's. And I'm sure this is, uh, this is something toward the end of the episode that will kind of come into play. Larry's decision of uh, not telling Amen about the Sea Smoke has a rider, and uh, you know that uh, Rhaenyra is getting new riders and dragons. It, it comes in toward the end of the episode, but meanwhile, at Dragonstone, you know, you got the council, they're gossiping about who is this new rider, this new peasant that's riding the dragon now. They're gossiping about let, letting peasants and common people ride the dragons. And on the other end, you got Masaria, you know, uh, Rhaenyra's new girlfriend down at Dragonstone. She's telling them, she's telling Rhaenyra, look, damn all them rules about the Targaryen and the bloodline and all that. We need dragon riders. And God damn it, if he can ride a dragon, let him ride it. Keep it. Uh, but, you know, keep in mind. That he is Corliss's son, the Snee Snake. He is the Snee Snake's, the Sea Snake's bastard son. So he probably, it is a chance that some kind of way he might have some type of uh, lineage type blood. High, well, he has high, high level blood in him anyway from being the, sne the Sea Snake's bastard. Which... Which, while I'm bringing it up, let me talk about uh, how bad I feel for Adam in that scene. You know, where Laris is, not Laris, is, Corliss, Lord Corliss, he goes in there to see Adam in, in the quarters at, at Dragonstone, you know, in his, uh, in his guest quarters. And he says, well done, very well done, you know, uh. This is the moment that I was expecting Corliss, uh, Lord Corliss to come in there and say, good job, son, or acknowledge him as his son. But if you know Cor Lord Corliss's character, he's just not hes just not the type of man to do that. You know, maybe we'll get it later. 
But right now, he's just not going to do that right now. But that was his way of saying good job, son, when he say, well done, and then walks off. And you can tell that it hurt Adam's feelings because he's been waiting for that validation. We know about that because his brother was telling Adam, his brother was telling him, hey, man, that validation you're seeking, you're never going to get it, so just let it go. But I got a feeling that later on, maybe next episode, Lord Corliss is going to go ahead and validate his sons and maybe even go ahead and ask Rhaenyra to take the bastard off their name and just make them, uh, you know, uh, whatever their house name is, the sea snake. Just make them full on, you know, give them the house's, the house name. But, uh, we'll see. But meanwhile, at Heron Hall, at Heron Hall, Little Oscar, that's my guy right there, Little Oscar. He's a, he's an impressive young lad, isn't he? I mean, I like how Little Oscar played this game where he was in the back. He, he was in the back room talking to uh, Damon, and Damon is telling him, "Look, you little twit, you're gonna get out there. You're gonna call your the river man to go fight for me, and that's gonna be it. You're gonna do what I say, boy." Just and he takes his sword and pokes him in the chest, just like that. And Oscar say, "Yes, sire, I shall do your bidding." Yes, sire. Then Oscar go out there and he proceeds to cuss Damon out in front of all the people. He basically belittles Damon Targaryen, cuss him out, and he forced Damon to deliver justice and correct the wrong that he started by allowing that Blackwater guy to go, that black guy. To go out there and do very vicious and heinous things to the uh, common people. And I loved it. I, I got a feeling I'm going to like little Oscar Tully. I'm going to like him going forward. Straight up, man. Yeah, I'm going I'm to like little Oscar Tully. But, uh... But while we at Heron Hall, we can't forget about Damon and his dreams. Damon and his visions. Hopefully, this is the last dream that we'll have with Damon, where he has a dream with the Two Face version. You know, Batman's Two Face, the Two Face version of uh, Viserys, where he got half his face fell off. And uh, Viserys asks Damon a real good question. He talks about how I never wanted to crown. And that's the thing that the. That the river lady talked to Damon about last week's episode when they were out there by the uh the heron tree or whatever they call them trees, the weirwood trees. That people who don't want to rule, they are the ones that end up ruling always. It's the people who don't want to rule that always end up being the king, the queen, or whatever. And Viserys would tell him, I never wanted to rule. And he takes the crown off, he says, What about you, Damon? Do you still want to rule? You see what the crown does to people? Look at Aegon. He he looking just like his daddy, looking like Two Face uh, uh, back at King's Landing. Look at Viserion. The list goes on and on. Look how the crown just destroys people. And I think Viserion in, in his in Damon's dream asks him a very good question, and we didn't get the answer. It cuts away before we can get the answer. But I think it's one of those things where we're gonna see with Damon's actions what his answer to that question was. Does he just want to just serve Rhaenyra, his wife, and be the the, uh, the king circuit, uh, whatever they call it, the king concord, or whatever they call it, concourse? Or does he want to be the king that run everything? We're going to probably get the answer to that next episode. Or maybe they'll stretch it out in the season three, but going forward, we're going to get that answer. But back at King's Landing, Aegon the Cripple attempts to walk. And he's trying to walk with the uh, High Mesa. The High Mesa is giving him some walking therapy. And then Larys comes through the door. And that's when we find out that it's Larys Clubfoot Strong. The Master of Whispers, he's the one that's been trying to rush Aegon's healing to rush Aegon to get back on his feet 
because he want to get uh, Amon out of that king seat. And he's saying that he is scared. He's telling the Mesa that he's scared that Amon is so angry he doesn't know what Amon's going to do. And he's right about that, but deep down we know what it is. We know Laris Clubfoot. He want he's gonna have it in good with the king, and he know that he gonna end up being Aegon's hand, king hand, hand of the king probably. So he got it in with Aegon, and we know it's all personal reasons. But I do want to say I do feel a cripple bond growing between Laris Clubfoot and uh. A gun. I do feel a cripple bonding that's forming with those guys. And then you got old Jacaris there. Tells his mom. Basically, you know, tells his mom what they've been thinking. Him and Rainier has been thinking the whole time but never spoke of it. He just talked about, you know, I'm not. My father is not a Targaryen. My father does not have Targaryen blood. My father is a strong and he was bringing up a good point. You let all these commoners come about. You let all these commoners come about and let them go and try to ride a dragon. Right? You get all these commoners and you let them ride a dragon. And it takes away from the Targaryens being gods. And it also... People will, he know that just like his mother's being challenged, people would challenge him because everybody knows the truth that he's not, his father was not a Targaryen. His father was a strong. So he brings a good point and it's, you know, I think that, that was, that was a good scene between him, uh, him and his mother, Rhaenyra. And Allison, boy, Allison, she done lost her mind, ain't it? You got Sir Christian Cole banging her out, and then uh, you got uh, her son, Amy, and he fired her last week. So this week, this episode, she just wants to go out to the woods and lay up in the water. That scene where she was laying in the water looking up, was everybody thinking what I was thinking? I mean, the, the first thing I was thinking, boy, is she lucky that they don't have alligators in Western Rose. I mean, is there alligators in the Game of Thrones universe? I mean, because they can't have no damn alligators. I've never seen. Have we ever seen alligators in the Game of Thrones show? Because she laying up in that water. Like, ain't no. It can't be. But it would have been funny if an alligator would have came and chomped down on her. It would have been hilarious. I would have killed. I would have loved it. But. That dr the bastard, that drunk Targaryen bastard. I'm not talking about the one that's uh. If you didn't keep up with it, the the two bastard Targaryens that end up riding the dragons at the end. Okay, the the taller one with the lighter hair. You know, he is a. Uh, I think it, his mother might have been Sarah, but his his mother was a you know like a bastard. And um of uh. Maybe Jacarius. See, that's the problem. They use the same names over and over. But the older Jacarius, you know, Viserys and and uh, Damon's father. Basically, he had a bastard daughter, and she ended up having a son. Which you know, they're um, yeah, she ended up having a son. So uh, you know uh. Viserys and Damon's first cousin is that guy, the tall guy that that uh that stood up to the dragon and saved that woman life in the dragon pit, and you know his daughter died and everything, and it, um you know he's yeah if I'm correct he's Viserys, you, you can let me know in the comments, but he's Viserys and Damon's first cousin. If I'm if I'm correct, and he grew up a poor peasant, you know, right there at King's Landing, but he has the second largest dragon now, if I'm not mistaken. That dragon that he has, I forgot the dragon's name, is the second largest dragon next to uh, what's the name of Amon's dragon? 
damn, I forgot Amos Dragon. You know, Amos has the Vagar, right? Vagar, like, I think, like, damn near 200 years old. But Vagar is a larger dragon. But that dragon that that guy got, uh, the bastard, uh, the taller bastard with the light hair, that is the second largest dragon. Now the other guy that's like a drunk, he was stumbling in the in the dragon poop. And I forgot the name of that dragon that chose him. That idiot, he get to fly the dragon, he can't control it. He look half drunk. He flying over King's Landing. Alright, this fool is flying over King's Landing. And dang on Eamon looked up and got up from the council meeting and saw the damn dragon flying up there. His this fool flying up the dragon around. And this is where we come back at where Laris chose not to tell Eamon about Rhaenyra getting those extra the uh, new dragon rider, see. So Eamon was taken by surprise when he saw that guy uh that guy flying sea smoke. I mean that's not sea smoke, but that guy flying uh that dragon. But his drunk he flying the dragon out of control. Woo-hoo! And he happy anyway because he want you know, he wanted to bra- he was bragging about him being a Targaryen ambassador and some of the people down at the uh at the at the tavern, they didn't believe him. But this fool, so Amy gets on a horse. Gets on a horse. He chase runs to uh Vagar. Gets on Vagar. Vagar old as hell. Vagar almost 200 years old. Vagar, Vagar can't keep up with that dragon before that dragon gets to Dragonstone, the safety of Dragonstone. And here we are. And look behind me. Here we are. Where Rhaenyra, who was once looking weak by the end of this season, episode 7, she is looking stronger than ever. Look at all of those dragons. She is looking strong. Right? And then don't forget about... uh. Damon's other daughter, who was uh on her way to Pentos, and she's gonna probably end up getting the sheep killer. What they call that? The sheep eater dragon. I forgot the name of the dragon. She, the dragon's called Sheep Eater or something like that. She's gonna probably end up getting that wild dragon too. And then and that's gonna be another dragon added to Rhaenyra. But gotta remember the one child that Allison has that's back in Old Town, High Tower, Old Town. She has like a 16-year-old, and that dragon is just now starting to fly. So that's another dragon for House Green. So we're coming, we're coming into uh the season finale episode. One key thing I really like was notice how um Eamon, he didn't do like uh Rihanna. Renette Rihanna, and that's her name, the uh, Sea Smokes, uh, Corliss's wife, uh, the, the queen that never was. Uh, remember, she could have she could have got away, but she decided to turn around and told that dragon, to t- and she turned around and fight, and that was her death. But it's interesting to see, Eamon, when he saw that he was outmatched, he turned his ass. It was funny to see how, it was funny to see Eamon scared for once instead of aiming targaryen inflicting the terror it was fun it was really interesting to see him scared for once and he hurried up and turned that dragon around and ran back to king's landing but this is going to be a, a interesting last episode we're coming up on next week and it's uh, it's going to be interesting and it well, i think whatever happens is going to be laying the groundwork for season three and uh can't wait to see it. We got. I gotta wait a whole six days to uh, to see what happens. You know, if you're still watching, make sure you like this, share it with a friend, and uh, until next time, four thousand subscribers. <laughs>